I had to call this emergency meeting in a ladies' room. Yes. <laughs> a meeting in a ladies' room. Only I would like to invite the brothers in because I really need to talk to the brothers. We need to talk to the brothers. Brothers. I love you. I love you dearly. And I would gladly give my life this everyday living when I'm giving my life force to you, when you're receiving our life force. The movement of the Black Woman is God is a very powerful movement. I listened to Juanique Shabazz. Wanik Kimi Tehuti Shabazz and Natural Tehuti, the two gods building on the power of the woman, which has not fully been recognized and manifested in its fullness, is just now coming into fruition, just becoming visible. And I would just like to say, now that we all understand that the world revolves Everything revolves around the sun. The sun gives life. The sun burns with fire. The sun co-creates. The sun gives birth and life to everything, to everything. And the woman is has been referred to in European history as the most holy. And how did angels get turned into men? The same way the 13 moon 20 day calendar was turned into a solar calendar, but in reverence to the patriarchy, and then the matriarchy was distinguished in many ways called heresy paganism goddess worship you know goddess worship we all know it well and for the sisters we really can't expect to find a man who we are truly and completely equally yoked with. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. We are different beings. The woman is the life-giving energy. And the man is the life germinating Circulating, the moon goes around the earth 13 times. The earth goes around the sun, everything revolves around the sun. And if we have been watching closely, you will see that everything revolves around the sisters and sisterhood. And if sisters, you're still walking around saying that a man's just going to be a man, a man, you can't change nobody. That's not true. Look in your own life, because I'm sure at some point in your life, if you're on a journey, you have put your life in the hands of a man that you felt was worthy of taking care of what he's supposed to take care of. And he cannot be your equal. He doesn't have children. He never will grow in ways that women grow. He never will. He can only grow the way he grows. And brothers, you really have to understand what that means. And what that means is that if you're going to grow with a goddess, then you have to be humble to her power. And you also have to be receptive to her wisdom and what she may have to contribute to you. You're, you're not the only teachers. We're teachers too. And unfortunately the patriarchy, hold up, I'll show you. <laughs> these, right here, see these? I know it's backwards, but I'm sure you can make it out. It's running the world. 
Neanderthal are running the world. So, to get back to our ancestral ways, we have to understand a few things that I like to go over right now. That you just can't take things and run with it because it feels good and it caters to your emotions. So, when men, when you say things like, I want a hard working woman, no, you really don't. You really don't. You really want a well rested woman and a woman who can manage well, delegate. That's what you really want because you want your wife to have the energy and the time to give to you. Okay, next on the list, uh, she's letting go of herself. You know, she's not the way she used to be when we first got together. Oh, hmm, she doesn't look the same 20 years later <laughs> that she looked when we first met. Well, she probably has some children. And she's working now not just to maintain herself the way she was when you met her, but now she's maintaining a household full of people in addition to herself. So herself gets last sometimes. She gets neglected. But don't go have an affair on her because of it. Don't make her feel less than herself. Less than a goddess. The same goddess you physically united with in the beginning because obviously that's what was important to you because if you would go and have an affair on your woman and use that as an excuse as she let herself go you're really not worth her because she's more than her physical body we're multi-dimensional beings and I realize sometimes they may be hard for you to absorb because men in their density sometimes, you know, this is not a diss, this is just we all know the truth now. Sometimes, you know, with the heavy eating and the density, you know, the density, the anger, the emotions and so forth. Sometimes they just won't understand because, like I said, women experience something that men will never experience um the woman has been changed to be the moon goddess and she needs the sun and oh without the sun she's just a cold ball of rock that's not really true so the white moon is responsible for the fertility so then it magnetizes to what it can fertilize the sun gives the life and the man he circles her he circles her and he protects her and he keeps her safe because she's nesting she doesn't go anywhere the sun doesn't go anywhere the sun doesn't rise and set it doesn't um, we got a lot of work to do and we're not going backwards. Okay, that's the next one too. Staying in the now moment, which is an excuse really to um, not be accountable for anything that you do and not see the uh, path of destruction that you're leaving in your way and saying that, you know, that's some kind of spiritual law. Yes, you are supposed to be fully present. You can't help but be that or physical or dense. So we're not moving at the speed of the earth. We're heavy because of the things we eat, the things we think, and our emotions and all that. Penis control is um, is a must. And keeping secrets, that whole Leash Keys song, I'll keep your secrets, that's not cute. Why do you need secrets? And furthermore, It misses the accountability thing um, and those are probably the same people that say stay out of judgment so really what you're doing is not obeying the laws of God when you say I'm stay out of judgment you're not utilizing your God-given faculties to make sound judgment calls and to have critical thinking yes criticize everything question it if it comes from this society, 
This society right here? Yeah, you better question it. You better question it. So, just don't take all this new age philosophy and just run with it. Reference it with your ancient references. Shake anti Diop. I don't have to tell you all the scholars. Y'all know them. Um, yeah, the critical thinking thing. Stay in the now moment. Um, no, don't mix business with pleasure. Now, that's not uh, in according to spiritual law. All the trees of life talk about beauty and pleasure. And um, it's a vehicle. Emotions, motion, are the fuel. Um, it's overused and abused by this society. The head of principle, shun principle, beauty, um, visual imagery, imagination. Um, Disney makes a lot of money on the head of principle. So um, it does exist. Yes, you can mix business and pleasure. Most cultures do, but they do it in balance. They do it in balance. They do it with some morals, sound judgment, wisdom. All these things are acquired through practices and studies and understanding your body and your brain and the chemistry of yourself and the makeup of your body and the makeup of your connection to the universe and just who you are. Once you study that and you understand that, you become a vehicle that is now in control of its navigation. The mirror principle. Okay. We're thinking that we're getting the mirror principle, you know, um, if the mirror is something, you see something in the mirror and, you know, you're looking at it and you're like, uh, and so you're trying to wipe it off, you know, the mirror, but you might, you got to fix yourself. Yes, that's obvious. We all need to be working on ourselves all the time, right? But what it is, is is the broken mirror and it's the endless mirror. There's the endless mirror which shows you the truth time and time and time again. It's just the truth will prevail and it will be seen straight up in the mirror. So that's the hall of mirrors and it's for some people if they're living in the shadow it will seem confusing but others like figuring out mazes and you know the hall of mirrors is just eternal life but then there's a the crack mirror and you know some thoughts say that it's anger and but it's also the step pyramid you know the top view of the step pyramid is also the glyph for the white mirror which was today which is my galactic signature that gives you what you ask for No, you're not attracting what you are. You are emitting a vibration, but you're emitting a, a vibration based on your thoughts and your thought patterns and your habits. And you could be saying anything out of your mouth, but it's what your emotions are saying is what the universe is listening to because you're a tuning fork. You're a, like an energy field. So saying things out of your mouth, Sebek style, just in, on the Tim side, it's not really gonna cut it you know what I'm saying it doesn't penetrate when you just say things and you don't behave in a manner that's consistent with what you're saying and you're not in control of your emotions you're not in control of your breath you're not in control of your penis and so you're really just like chaos instead of order some people think the universe is chaotic and some think people think it's in order so natural order, um, the mirror principle gives you what you ask for, reciprocity, and what you ask for in your being is what you're going to get, not what you say out of your mouth or write on a piece of paper, but whatever is in your being and whatever you're feeling, and if you're thinking a whole lot about what I don't want, what I don't want that, and I don't want him to be that, and I don't want my man, and I don't want this, then what do you want? You're putting more energy in what you, what you don't want. And so basically you're attracting that again. You know. Or the other scenario is, is that you talked so much about what you wanted. Because you didn't want to put any energy on what you didn't want. And you didn't get all the details. And you got some stuff you didn't want. But what are you going to do? You're always going to get stuff you don't want. You got to work with it. That's why we have divine laws and principles. If you find yourself attracted to someone and it feels like it's otherworldly and it's not just your penis, then more than likely 
there's a lot that you're supposed to be doing together and not with just your penis so um, building empires is not just about making the babies because that's the most dense thing that can come out of sex a baby we love them they're cute but they're dense they're heavy they're like us they're matter so yes we are in the now moment and we are present and I think what that message is is to be fully aware of the moment as in fully aware of the energy of the day the vibration the tone the color the day keeper the symbols the geometry of the day just being in tune with that that is being in the now moment but then we're multi-dimensional we're not just physical so don't let a patriarchal system tell you that the now moment means not planning for the future no that's some people's past they want to forget some people everybody doesn't need to forget their past our past is very powerful and strong and you know it's the untold American or world history but that's okay it's gonna be told <laughs> but I just wanted to share this emergency meeting with my family and the polygyny group and it may seem off topic but to me my whole life is about empire building empire of families that work together and grow together and build together and prosper together it is a possibility yes you can work with family and yes you can mix business and pleasure when you have the balance of my art you can do anything <laughs>